thank you for inviting me to speak at the launching of this guidance on ratios and costing of the social service workforce. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the organizers and everyone involved in organizing the Social Service Workforce Week. Child protection concerns, including all forms of violence, abuse, neglect, and exploitation, place a long-term burden on social services and the workforce and undermine investment and development across all sectors. In fact, the estimated cost, economic cost of violence against children is seven trillion per year. But it's not only the economic cost, there is also the human rights implication. Protection of children is a right embedded in the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Essentially for long-term sustainable development, growth and development, and the attainment of the sustainable development goal. So social service workforce is critical for those goals. Undeniably, one of the most important elements of any well-functioning child protection system is a qualified social service workforce. Social service workers are often the first line of response for children and families facing adverse situations. They play a critical role in identifying, preventing, and managing risk and in responding to situations of vulnerability and harm. They provide a system of support for children and families by connecting them with critical social services, such as healthcare, education, and social protection. A well-developed social service workforce is also key to promoting social justice, reducing discrimination, challenging harmful behaviors and social norms, preventing family separation, and when necessary, supporting children in alternative care. In too many places, however, the social service workforce is not sufficiently prioritized in government spending, and the number of trained and qualified social service workers is seriously inadequate to respond effectively to critical child protection needs. The limit this limits the quality of service delivery and case management for children and families and undermine efforts to strengthen the child protection system in a sustainable manner. Therefore, there is an urgent need to convince government decision makers that more robust and sustained investment in social service workforce planning and development is needed, that the social services they provide should receive a larger share of the budget. This is not always this, this does not always require additional resource allocation, but rather a reprioritization of budgets and social and resources to the social service workforce to support families and communities as a key strategy to prevent rather than only respond to child protection violations and the recurrence of these violations. To make this case, however, decision makers must be motivated and equipped with compelling evidence and facts to support reform. The absence of guidance on how to calculate a minimum ratio of social service workers per population in need often hinders the ability to make this case. Furthermore, planners often lack a clear approach and tools to cost the level of investment required, including both initial investment and the ongoing cost of developing, supporting, and sustaining the workforce. To support this effort, UNICEF has collaborated with the Global Social Service Workforce Alliance to develop a guidance for policymakers in government ministries and workforce managers to develop a minimum ratio of social service workers per population and to calculate the cost of achieving an adequately resourcing that minimum ratio. Using these tools, we hope governments will be better positioned to make investment in social service workforce strengthening a higher priority, resulting in improved service delivery and case management for children and families, so that children can be better protected from violence, abuse, exploitation, and harmful practice. Investing in the social service workforce is critical to accelerating progress on all SDGs in the decade for action and leaving no one behind. I thank you.